Welcome. This video is going to look at another common addition reaction of alkenes. Again, this is from section 10.2 of the Brown SL Chemistry book. And this is where alkenes add onto themselves in a process that forms polymers. So it happens because alkenes easily undergo addition reactions. But in this case, it allows you to take many single alkene molecules, the exact same molecule, but now when the double bond opens up, it just joins to another uh, monomer, is what we call these, another alkene molecule, another like alkene molecule, and just continues to join end to end. So the analogy often used is it's like people unfolding their arms to join with other people on either side of them. And in this case, they've drawn the same looking kid adding on to himself, or in the case down here of ethene, if the double bond in ethene opened up, that leaves a bonding site on either side. And so we just put the monomer, whatever our starting alkene molecule was, in parentheses and then show with an N that we could have a CH group join on here as well as a CH group join on here. And this could go on and on and on. So in this case, ethene monomers form what is then known as polyethylene or polyethene. So the result is a long chain of mon monomers bonded together into what we call a polymer, so many monomers, and they're a repeating unit. And as you noticed on the previous slide, it leaves an open bond at each end of this long chain. So we represent the polymer by putting the monomer's original formula in parentheses with the subscript of N to show the length is really limitless. And polymers often contain thousands of molecules, and they're a hugely important uh, material in the plastics industry. So alkenes often provide the starting material for lots and lots of products in our, our life. Plastics are far more prevalent than you realize. So here's some common um, polymers of alkenes. Propene, which would be three carbons, and you notice um, they've drawn it a little bit different here to make it more obvious how it bonds to itself. If you drew propene with three carbons in a row in that double bond, then when this double bond opens up, it's a little harder to see. So when this double bond opens up, I guess I should just erase it. It's a little harder to see how it's going to bond to itself. So instead, what they've done is they've put the, the third carbon at a 90 degree angle and now when it opens up you can see another one can easily bond on as well as another one on this one can easily bond on with that third carbon just kind of tucked out of the way and that would be the same with butene or whatever that think of that almost as like being a branch off of the, the polymer. So that forms something called polypropylene. You maybe have heard of it. That's often what's used in the dry uh, weave fabrics. Polypropylene helps wick moisture away. It's also used in you know, long underwear quite often. Chloroethene is just ethene with a chlorine substitution. So we see one chlorine here. If it was dichloroethene, there'd be two chlorines on there. But this forms polychloroethene, or what you probably know as PVC. That's the white plumbing pipe that you often see. A third really common one is tetrafluoroethene, and just like it sounds like, there's four fluorines on tetrafluoroethene. So it forms polytetrafluoroethylene or polytetrafluoroethene, or what's more commonly known as Teflon. And Teflon, uh, you maybe now know it more as a non-stick cooking surface. And if you think about it, four fluorines are going to make it very, very nonpolar and very non-reactive or very not sticky because fluorines are so highly reactive when they're in a fluorine molecule, but once they become bonded then, remember, that forms a very strong bond between the carbon and the fluorine, and there's very few things that are going to be able to bump that off. So uh, very nonpolar, very low van der Waals. So next couple of slides, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the history and some uses of these uh, polymers. This isn't stuff that you have to commit to memory, just stuff that will maybe help you understand the whole idea of polymers a little better. So polyethylene was the first polymer. It was made in 1935 by accident, which is often the case with chemical discoveries. It was actually a contamination. And it's used now as a good electrical insulator on wires, so that hard plastic on wires, that's 
polyethylene. It was also used in developing radar during World War II, and it's used in virtually every plastic container you can think of. So whether it's kind of a flimsy container that your strawberries come in, or if it's a much heavier plastic container like your recycled bin, it's probably polyethylene. So when it's very flexible, it's what's called low density, or LDPE, low density polyethylene. Or when it's something tough like your Home Depot bucket or uh, pipes and those types of things, then it's high density or HDPE. The polytetrafluoral ethene, um, again, better known to us as Teflon, that also is a variation of that is what we know as Gore-Tex. And again, it makes use of the very low van der Waals forces in the PTFE to make nonstick cookware along with other surfaces. Um, it also has waterproofing properties because it forms a microporous membrane. And what that means is it has pores less than a micrometer in diameter. So the way Gore-Tex works is that the pores are 700 times bigger than an individual water molecule. So when you're sweating inside your Gore-Tex you know, rain jacket, your body heats up that sweat to help it evaporate. And as it evaporates, it, it, water is individual molecules, so it's able to escape through those pores on your Gore-Tex jacket. But when it starts raining out, a water droplet is 20,000 times bigger than these little pores. So a water droplet is gigantuan compared to a water molecule. So water molecules are small enough to escape through the pores, but water droplets cannot come in through the pores. And that's how quick dry fabrics work. Um, as I mentioned, many plastics we use are some kind of polymer, and many are just variations or substitutions on polyethylene or another alkene. So polystyrene, we better know as styrofoam. I already mentioned PVC is polyvinyl chloride. Um, polyacrylate, you know of this as um, the super absorbent crystal in diapers, and then polypropylene, the quick drying fabrics. A couple problems we have with plastics, and I'm pretty sure I've got this on another slide, so I'm just going to go ahead and advance here, is polymers are really impermeable to water, so they're highly waterproof. Remember, they're really nonpolar, so there's virtually no attraction between water and plastics. And polymers are also saturated molecules, so they're very non-reactive. This means the very features that make plastics so great for us also make it a huge environmental nightmare. It simply doesn't degrade or break down. So it causes health issues for many land and sea creatures when they get inge when they ingest the plastic or get tangled in the plastic debris. And also, if you try burning the stuff to get rid of it, many plastics produce toxins called dioxins. So you have to recycle the stuff. And we are getting better about finding ways to use recycled plastics. You see more and more products made with recycled plastics. But in the meantime, I think you'll consider, continue to see more cities and countries simply banning the use of plastic grocery bags, styrofoam containers for like carry out food, um, the sale of bottled water. Um, sale of bottled water not only creates a huge supply of waste, but it also takes waters from, from areas that need it when there really is no reason to drink bottled water over just your tap water. So to sum up, alkene additions work because the carbon-carbon double bond that makes an alkene and alkene opens up, as we see here, oops, actually as we see up here, so this double bond opens up, allowing the X to bond into one site and the Y into the other site. So down here I've drawn the basic uh, formula for an alkene, and what I want to do is just make a quick little diagram for you. This is similar to what they did in your book and just remind you that this can open up to form if you add on H2 then you're going to form an alkane. If you form if you add on a halogen then you're going to form a dihalogenal alkane. You could also add on HX, a halogen halide, and then you're going to form just a halogenal alkane. You could add on water, and then you're going to form an alcohol. And then lastly, you could add on itself 
and form a polymer. So those are the five addition reactions. Fairly straightforward.